Hello, this is Lex Berman, and I'm here at Center for Geographic Analysis, and I'll be talking about georeferencing with QGIS 212. We're going to look at some scanned historical maps that we just find online and show you a little bit about how to georeference them, either using vector layers or base maps available through the Open Layers plugin. Let's go ahead and try to look for some historical maps first. Let's take a look at the images, see what we see. And you'll see here's a pretty good size historical base map that we could try to use. And uh, But I know that the Hooghly River kind of goes north and south. So I think that I might want to just get a simpler one to start with and then georeference the bigger one once I have already hooked this one into place. So here's a map that looks like something I might be able to use. It's got Fort William. It's got a couple of easily identifiable things on it. That would be a good candidate for a map that you'd want to georeference. This one's a much bigger image, a lot more details, so we might save that for the second image that we do. And then, now that we've got our images, what we want to do is fire up QGIS. And also we want to go get some vector data, actually. So vector data, I would recommend using Diva, Diva GIS, sorry, Diva GIS. And you can go ahead and get a couple of their free spatial data layers, country level. For example, if we just grabbed India, say at the administrative level, grab that and go back and get the, for example, the, uh, what else we got? How about inland water? Okay, so now we've got a couple of vector layers that we've downloaded, and we can go into, uh, continue, there they are. We can go into our, here's QGIS fired up, and Go ahead and start a new project, and we will first unzip those downloads that I just got. So here they are, like the Indian administrative, administrative geography. We'll just simply extract that to our India folder. Spelled it wrong. <laughs> Go ahead and fix that. Okay. And then we'll get the water and we'll extract it to the same place. Extract to India. Okay, we've extracted that. So now if we're in uh, QGIS, we should be able to open up, for example, the, here we go, India. Let's take a look at the list. So we have a choice. We can just open up, say, Administrative 3 or Administrative 2, perhaps, and the water areas. There's a shape file. And the lines. Just open all this stuff up. Start taking a look at India. Here we go. Put that underneath. All right. So here's India and its river system. And we know that. Calcutta is right around here. And you could just confirm that if you want. Just say, where's Calcutta? And you could simply get a rough idea by going here and zooming out. Okay, so you know it's up here somewhere in West Bengal. And it's right where this inlet in the river goes up to the northeast from that inlet. Okay, so you can just simply know that it's up here in West Bengal, near the border of Bangladesh, and it's where this inlet curves up here. So this is basically the section of river that we're interested in right here. We know that much. 
Now, you can try zooming in and figuring out where this are in terms of the administrative system. Or you can just simply load up the uh, plugin. Make sure that you have the Open Layers plugin installed. You just simply go to your plugins, fetch the repositories, and you check out the Open Layers. Let's go Open Open Layers plugin. And if it wasn't installed, I could just click Install. In this case, it's already checked. That means I already installed it. Okay, so now I know the Open Layers plugin is available. I can go to Web, Open Layers, pick an Open Layer. I like OpenStreetMap myself, and just click on that. And it will then load up my OpenStreetMap version of this data. Now what I'm going to do is put it underneath the water. And I can see that it's pretty close. It's not exact. But if I was to zoom in onto this section of the center of Calcutta, which is the old historic district, then I can see there's really a drift. There's really a drift between the freely available vector data and what's available in these open base maps. If you were to go in and check the other ones available, like uh, Bing, and Google, and so on, you'd see that they all pretty much align. And I'm going to go ahead and use the open layers base map, is what I'm saying. I've got a lot more detail, and it's really useful to use that as a georeferencing base map. So now I don't need this, basically. I don't need this. I'm just going to use this base map for my georeferencing. I see Fort William, I see this railroad. This is what I want to see. So now all I have to do is go ahead and go to the raster georeferencer, fire that up. Now I have two windows, which is what I want. I want a uh, I want one window for the map that I'm georeferencing, and another for the. Just zoom in a little bit get it to reload. There it is. Zoom out. There. So I want one for the map that I'm going to try to georeference. So I open that raster image, which is uh, in my downloads. This one here. Let's do that one. So I'll just say it's WGS84, which if you check your project properties, this will probably be in pseudo Mercator WGS84, so we'll just have to live with that difference. We don't actually know the projection of this. We're going to sort of rubber sheet it. And you see that it's not really true to true north, but we should be able to figure out that this is Fort William and so on, some other details. Here's the railroad. We'll start there. So basically, you just start zooming in and get a point that you know right here. Bingo. And then you say from the map canvas, and now whatever I click here is where my georeferencing point will be. And I can check it out and accept it and say OK. And then continue. So in this case, I'll uh, zoom out a little bit. Now I want to do this northern tip of Fort William. Grab a point there right here from the canvas it's right here okay and so on and uh, this is basically how you run through the georeferencing I'll zoom out a little bit try to get another spot like triangulate a little bit I'm gonna go down to this corner here I think so we'll try that here zoom in Okay, we'll try to do this corner here. Run the map. Let me move it over here. Okay, now I want to return to my from map canvas statement and then go ahead and get that corner. Say OK. So now I've got three points, which is 
just a total bare minimum. If possible, I'll get another. Oops, went way too far. B is in last. B is in right. If possible, I'll get another one up here somewhere. Like maybe this bend in the river. Let's go over here. What have we got? Here's the bend in the river. The mint is right around here. I'm going to try for this bend in the river. It's not too clear, but it's definitely somewhere around here. And I think this major road running here is what's running in the, into here. This is this edge, so I think I'll go for this corner and this corner. Okay, so I'll just add another point right here on the map canvas and right here. And say OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and say run. Reset a transformation type. OK. Well, I'll just say polynomial one. Target SRS, invalid projection, pseudo Mercator. I'll put raster. There's the tip. OK. Let's see what happens. Open it. Didn't work, which is typical. Hmm. All right. Oh, it's successfully generated. There you go. Now, we should have the tip. There it is. Open it. Put it underneath. Uh, for example, yeah, this water, turn that on. Okay, so that's roughly the same kind of error we had between the base map and the vectors before. What we want to do now is, is do it between this georeferenced map and the base map. In other words, we should see, if I make this transparent, we should see properties, do transparency, or I can do that right here. So I should be able to see my historical map correctly overlapping the area of Fort William. And it more or less does. It's not perfect. But this gives you an idea of how to georeference your historical maps. And you could open up, this card, uh, save those as points. Calcutta 1. OK. Oh, open up our next file here. And we could do the same thing again. And we could then begin to warp this based on what we've just done and learned about the areas of Calcutta in the previous map. And then we'd have a much more detailed map that we could load up onto our current contemporary GIS base maps. So there you go. It's a very simple introduction to georeferencing with QGIS 2.12. Thanks.